Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth broadcast. This broadcast is a live Bible question and answer program where you, the radio listeners, have an opportunity to call into this radio station with Bible questions in order to receive Bible answers. Now, this afternoon, we want to invite your attention uh, with us to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, and what we're going to look at this afternoon is part of the Apostle Peter's gospel sermon that he preached after Jesus uh, ascended into the heaven and he sat down on the right hand of God. And now we're going to be dealing with the subject of, now listen to this radio audience because this is of the utmost importance, the subject of does Christians or do Christians get baptized? Do Christians get baptized? And this subject is of most importance because there are a lot of different doctrines and, and teachings that are false uh, out there in the realm of religion of what baptism and the purpose of it is. And so what we have to do, as we should in all subjects, is we've got to let the Word of God be the final authority on what we teach and on what we believe. Doesn't matter what our opinion is, doesn't matter what man thinks, how I feel. What matters is what does said the Lord through the written word of God. Amen. Now in Acts chapter 2, we have the apostle Peter, the one who Jesus gave the keys to and said he was going to give the keys to in Matthew 16. He is standing up on the day of Pentecost. He's in Jerusalem. There's a lot of different nations and people and languages that are there in Jerusalem on this day of Pentecost. Peter stands up, as the Bible tells us in Acts 2.14, with the eleven... And he preaches the gospel message for the first time as an accomplished fact. He preaches about the death. He preaches about the burial. He preaches about the resurrection of Jesus the Christ. And the Bible tells us in Acts 2.36, this is part of Peter's sermon. He says, therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly, God had made that same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men, brethren, what shall we do? Now, radio listeners, they want to know what they need to do to be saved. They want to know what they need to do in order to get out of darkness and into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. They want to know what they need to do in order to have their sins washed away. Peter's going to give them the answer. In verse 38 of Acts chapter 2, the Bible says, And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. That is by the authority of Jesus Christ for, he's going to explain why, the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, the question is, at what point did they become Christians? Were they Christians before baptism mm. or were they Christians after they were baptized? Peter goes on to say, for the promise is unto you, to your children and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. My friend, that, that is you and me living today. That is all of us on this side of the cross today. Peter said this promise is for us. And with many other words did he testify and exhort saying, save yourselves, something they had to do. Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Verse 41, then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. My friend, they were not Christians before they got we baptized. You to call in to the number 281-837-2222 because that question is still on the floor. Do Christians get baptized? Because there are many who are being taught that ungodly doctrine, and, and it is uh, the burden of proof is on you to show us some book, chapter, and verse where Christians, people already children of God, get baptized for, and then you have to explain for what reason did they get baptized. That's what we're asking, because that's important. Because if you thought you were a Christian, before you got into the water, then my friend, you're still lost. You can't be 
taught wrong and baptized right. Amen. And there are many who will listen to this program, believe that they were saved, believe that they were already children of God before they got baptized. Now the number of the call is 281-837-2222. We want you to call in with your question or comment, and we will listen very attentively. At this time, I'm going to pass it to Brother Stephen Ozan to elaborate more on our subject. Now, Henry, uh, you are aware that it is taught by individuals, as Greg Griffin profoundly taught, that an individual is saved by his prayer. Amen. And so, therefore, knowing that Greg is aware that people do get dipped in water, which is the term for baptism, that he is literally saying that that individual is already saved. Amen. Before he goes to the wall. Now, and I understand what you have just said is book, chapter, and verse. Then, then that is the question that I would like for someone in the audience to help us with. And that is, why be baptized if you're already saved? Amen. So, that's, so, if, so yeah. now the question Henry has posed is, do Christians get baptized? And I'd like to add an additional one in there. If they do, why do they get baptized if they're already saved? Knowing Amen. Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Mark 16 and 16. Here it is again. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And so, therefore, audience, the number is still 281-837-2222. Now, I want to point out something that Henry said to support him in his statement in 1 uh, Peter chapter 3, uh, the statement uh, of John 9, 31, which is a statement that Greg Griffith on his feedback corner rejects in its total statement that this individual was unqualified, the man in John 9, 31, to say that now we know God hear it not the prayer of a sinner, but he that uh, worships him and do his will, him he will heal. Well, Greg told us publicly that that man was just talking for himself. Now, we're going to go and see if Peter supports that man's statement. 1 Peter chapter 3. Now, the scriptures say... In uh, verse 11. Uh, well, let's go to verse 10. This is the description of the saved. Uh, 1 Peter 3.10 For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lip that they speak no guile. Verse 11. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it or pursue it. Verse 12. Why? For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayer. Amen. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Now, these seems to support the gentleman in John 9, 31. Now, I'm sure Greg and other of his cohorts and uh, those that are his contemporaries that agree with him, I am sure that they will understand that Peter surely is qualified to say who the Lord will hear and who he will not, being a teacher of the gospel. Matter of fact, you and I don't even know who Jesus is without Peter writing about him. If Peter doesn't preach the first message, you have no idea how to be saved. So therefore, having said that, I hope the audience is clear in understanding is that you can't discredit something in the Bible that is already written and validates what another scripture says. They are bookends and they support each other. God will not hear to the extent of answering the prayer for salvation for any soul that prays. So once again, Greg has failed miserably and God help his soul because he has failed in using another example out of its context. Amen. These two people that are praying are not praying for salvation. They are praying for what? And what is that they're asking for? Yeah. And what is it that they are <laughs> praying for? 
They are praying for God to continue to be with them in their walk on this earth, which Amen. is what the scriptures teach us. Without prayer, we can never have the guidance of God and his help in our lives. James is clear that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous will avail much. And to say that those individuals are praying to be saved, that is an erroneous and incorrect statement. There is no statement that, that even alludes to the fact as either of them were lost. It mentions they are justified in their prayer. He is right because one guy is praying as if he has everything right in his life and basically he's just thanking God that he's so perfect and then he criticizes the publican and the publican turns to the Lord and prays for forgiveness which is what Christians pray for all the time when they sin. When I pray and these brothers and other Christians on earth pray, we're not praying for salvation anymore. Why would I go to the Lord now after having been saved? Father, save me from my life of wretched. I'm already his child. I wouldn't say God make me your child. I'm already his child. I am praying for guidance, for strength to accept the scriptures, strength to believe the scriptures, strength to obey the scriptures, strength to love my brothers and sisters on earth and help them those who are outside of the body of Christ. I'm not praying for salvation when I pray. Salvation is at a point when it is reached and it is to be maintained. That's what Paul said. Maintain good works. When an individual does not, I'm going to say this, I'm going to pass the baton to these brothers. When an individual, hear me good, all ears, all ears, when an individual does not know the point at which a soul is saved, friends, that's not a preacher sent from God. Amen. 281-837-2222. Hey, hey, Ernie, listen, before I toss to our brother Dwayne Hammond, understand that you need to understand when Christianity began. Amen. See, a person did not become a Christian before Jesus died, buried, and rose from the grave and ascended into heaven. Amen. That didn't make a John the Baptist, understand this, was not a Christian. He was not in Christ. He was a disciple of Christ, but he was not a Christian. The baptism that John was giving and those he was baptizing, he wasn't baptizing them into Christ. He wasn't baptizing them uh, 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 the way we are to be baptized today because Christ gave the commandment to be baptized. See, when you try to go back to the thief on the cross, the thief on the cross lived under the old law. The thief on the cross uh, was, he, God, Jesus, while he was on earth, had the power to forgive sin. But before Jesus ascended, he told us where salvation, he placed salvation in the gospel. Amen. And if people are going to be saved, they're going to have to obey all the facts entailed in the gospel. Amen. And that's what I believe we miss it. The publican and the, and the tax collector in Luke 18 are not Christians. John the Baptist was not a Christian. And what we, what the, what baptism makes people today is it makes us Christian. When we are baptized today with the understanding, hear, believe, repent, confess, and being baptized, that puts us in Christ. When John was baptizing, that wasn't putting people in Christ. Christ had not even died yet. And so I believe we have a, 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 a wrong view and some false teachings on what a Christian is. The number to call is 281-837-2222. God bless you, brothers. You know, uh, I, I, I just want to say, you know, it may, it may come across or it seem that we're uh, picking on Greg Griffin. It, 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 it may, it may, it may uh, come up with that, with, that, uh, with that kind of a spin, but it, it's not the case. It just so happened that we happened to uh, get information from the program that, that he was on that particular time and we were discussing. We just heard about it and we're just bringing it up now. Uh, but that goes for Greg Griffin or anyone else who believes that doctrine. The, 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 the words apply to any and everyone who holds that doctrine, who teaches that doctrine. And, and, and the lines are open to Greg Griffin or any, any other person who believes that doctrine. You have Amen. the opportunity to call in and with your Bible scripture to justify why you believe what you believe. It's an important question to ask because there are a lot of people, as brothers have already said, that believe that. That believe that you become a Christian when you confess and you believe or when you pray or when whatever, you acknowledge Christ as your personal Savior, however that's done, and then you get baptized. They say that's your first work as a Christian is to be baptized. 
but the Bible doesn't teach that. You know, the Bible there is no scripture that 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 points that out. I, I want to look at uh, Acts chapter twenty-two, uh, and I want to start at, at verse six. You know, because uh, people this this one this one of the stories that people use to try to justify that a person is saved and then they may be baptized. They talk about uh, Saul of Tarsus, or, or Paul. They talk about his conversion. They talk about how, how he uh, saw the light and he fell and he was blind and he prayed and then God came and talked to Ananias and told him he's a chosen vessel of mine. They take that scripture and they say, Paul was already saved. He no. called him Brother Saul, mm -hmm. he says. That, that's in the ninth chapter of all these things I'm talking about now. He, he, they say that, see, he was already calling him Brother Saul. So he was already saved on the road to Damascus. And his first, his first act, or his first act as a, as a, as a, a or duty, or act of faith as a Christian was he got baptized. Mm. But the Bible does not teach. The Bible that. does not teach that. Now, I, and, I, and I want to prove that uh, in uh, chapter 22 of Acts, when he talks about his conversion. This is Paul retelling his own conversion, and he's going to explain what's going on. Chapter 22, verse 6. The Bible says, "And it came to pass as, as I made my journey and was come down unto Damascus." about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. And I fell into the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Now this is Jesus talking to him. He says, And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto him, Check this, Arise and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee mm. of all things which are appointed for thee to do. Now he says you're going to give instructions by which by, uh, he's going to give instructions on what you need to do. Now we're going to look at the instructions that he got. Now I want to point out before we even get there, Ananias gave him no instructions about going to teach anybody or going to preach to these people or that people. He told he told he told him it, it, it was simply he's going to give him instructions on what what he needed to do. Now he says uh, he says. In verse 11, it says, And when I could not see for the glory of the light, being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came to Damascus. And when Ananias, a devout man, according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me, and, and, and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him. Now, keep in mind here, you saw, well, he called him Brother Saul. And he just explained that Ananias was a Jew. Amen. That's why he refers to him as Brother Saul, because he is a brother according to the flesh. Because they are both Jews. They are both of Israel. Amen. Verse Thank 14, you, he says, And he said, The God of our Father had chosen thee, that thou should know his will, and see that just one, and should hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all, unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. Now, once again, he did not give any instructions on uh, who he was supposed to go teach to, he was supposed to go preach, or none of that. He's supposed to be an apostle. He's supposed to go and lay hands on the sick and uh, uh, lay hands and do miracles. None of those things were mentioned. So that's not, that's not the stuff that God was saying or Jesus was saying that he was going to be told what to do. That, that was not included. This is what he did. Brother Hamilton, right. can I, let's just clear for the, for the audience real quick. Now in verse 11 and 4, 15 that you just read, that's Ananias talking, right? Amen. That is Ananias coming to Saul exactly. while he's on his knees praying. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Verse 16, he says, Now why tarriest thou? What are you waiting for? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy mm. sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Now, question. Now, and, and here's a question that has to be answered. And for those of you that are sincere out there, I hope that you take this question to heart and really ponder and, 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 and accept the answer that you know that you, you know <laughs> is the answer. <clears throat> if, if Paul is a Christian already, Ananias has made it very clear that he's still in his sins. He still has sins. He tells him to get baptized to remove those sins. Question, and, and this is a question that you answer for yourself. If Paul is already a Christian at this point, but Paul has sins, in order for those sins to be removed, and now is giving him instruction to be baptized, then that would mean that every time you sin as a Christian, the only way to get those sins removed would be through baptism. If indeed Paul is a, Paul is a Christian at this time. Now the only time that that only time that, that doesn't apply is if you're being transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, and those sins that you have on you are what going to cause God cause God to not have fellowship with you and ultimately kill you at the judgment. In order to have those things removed, as Peter taught in Acts chapter two, which your brother already read, is to repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, so you should receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, so that you can become a Christian. 
that's what Ananias is teaching Paul. That's why Jesus is telling him, he's going, you're going to be told what you need to do in order to be saved. It's the same thing you read in, in, in Acts chapter 10 with, with Cornelius. He told Peter that he, 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 he was going to send him, somebody was going to tell him what he needed to do to be saved, he and his house. This is the same instruction that Paul, that, that Saul is giving because with God, there is no respect of person. Amen. This, 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 if, you, if there's honesty in your heart, this, this, these, these scriptures pro profoundly say and teach and prove to be true that Paul was not a Christian Amen. on the road to Damascus. He was not made a Christian on the road to Damascus. He was made a Christian after he obeyed the gospel just like any, any, any and everybody else, you and I myself included, have to do in order, in order to become a Christian and, have, and, have, and be qualified for a place in heaven with God forever. Amen. The number to call is 281-837-222. Now, now, radio listeners, now this, this is the burden of proof is on you. Those who, uh, who are advocating this ungodly doctrine of a sinner's prayer, the burden of proof is on you to just show us one example of one person becoming a Christian by repeating a prayer after some man or some woman. That, that's all you have to do. Call 281-837-2222 and show us one conversion. Just one. Of anybody becoming a Christian by repeating a prayer after some man or some woman. And then you're going to have to ask yourself, if that is the case, what then is the purpose of baptism? We hear outward sign for inward grace, but we have no Bible that shows that. No. We hear that baptism is to add you to a particular congregation to be no a Bible. That's no Bible for that. Amen. And so all you have to do is show some Bible. And we will start propagating that very same message. We will get on him. We will apologize. And we will repent for all of the ungodly and false Amen. doctrine that we have been preaching, if Amen. you can find that to be so. Amen. The number to call, 281-837-2222. God bless you. I'm so excited. I don't know what to do. But I'm going to tell you something. You know what the sad thing about misquoting scriptures? You will misquote yourself into the depths of hell. Really now, we were sold earlier. It was said that the first work of being a Christian is to get baptized. Well, I'm going to show you something. Look at John chapter 6. And if you will be so kind, look at verse 28. They asked Jesus, they said unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Teacher, Verse 29, Jesus answered and said unto him, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he had sent. Now, nah, so that means that would be the first work. You see, you know, audience, we're going to have to just keep praying for you. Because you got these want-to-be preachers who can get on a radio, TV, get a news article, and got enough money in their pocket to even get a magazine going. They are want to be pretenders of the gospel, but unfortunately they say enough of what you want to hear to make you feel good in the midst of your sins. But when the Lord sends a real nurse, a real servant, to show you how to get into the master's hands that he may relieve you of hypocrisy, Lesbianism, homosexuality, pedophilia, drunkenness, getting high, thievery, wife beating, husband beating, and all sorts of sin. You want to hear those words that make you feel good when we are bringing you the needles that prick. We're bringing you the clamps that separate the skin so the law can reach into your heart and remove that sin. But it hurts just like when the doctor starts to operate. And the only problem is, is you're being deceived by those who are unqualified by their speech to preach the gospel. They misquote scriptures constantly. They cannot validate scriptures. And the scripture describes them. They are ever learning and they can never come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. And that is only because they have not the spirit of God. So therefore when you say the work of God, the work of God is listed right here. So if you're going to discredit baptism as a work of God because it's called the work, well then guess what? Belief should be discredited. That's right. Now see, John 6.29 just took away every type of lie you could produce
to discredit baptism because not even belief is called That's the word. That's right, John 6. Because it's action. Belief involves an action, action of the soul to adhere to the instructions of God and then obey them. Now, number to call is 281-837-2222. We've got a couple Go of minutes ahead. for another question. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Go ahead, caller. Hey there. Go ahead, call are you there? Yes, go ahead. You're on the air. We got a couple of minutes. Okay, right. Okay. Listen, uh, you know I listen to you guys on Sunday and I mean you brothers and and and, 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 and every Sunday, man. I mean, you know what I'm, I'm trying to I just feel sorry for those who don't know Christ, know that Christ don't know them. Because you can know him and if he don't know you. I'm so glad that he know me, man, and I'm uh, I'm, I'm secured my, my salvation to where as I know salvation came first, and then my works come after I'm saved. But every weekend, every week, man, can y'all go any further in the Bible? I mean, are y'all just stopped on the baptism? Can no. Can go any further? No. No, we're not stopped on baptism, uh, but the idea is if you know the gospel, sir, and you said you're saved, we're just going to have to hear your words, but we don't know your profession of faith because you didn't say anything further. But the idea is that you can't be saved without being baptized. Amen. See, so therefore we can, we talk about many subjects, open up the floor to any question. You, If you've listened to the program, you know blind man I ask some of anything we'll and we'll it. try our best to yeah. give him something and, and some of the yeah. stuff is is so far out there we try to bring it home close enough where maybe someone else is thinking that way they can be helped. But if you are saved, then you've almost discredited your own salvation by assuming we're supposed to stay on the radio for 30 minutes and not at some point say how to be saved. Amen. And that kind of puts a question mark over your salvation and that you are a propagator of the word of truth. Because Jesus talked about water and baptism more than anybody. And his final statement in John chapter 3, if you're familiar, verse 3 through 5 is, If you're not born of the water, water and the spirit, spirit you are not saved. You Amen. will never see the kingdom of God. Amen. You will never enter it. Amen. So therefore, our time is up through faith, repentance, and confession. An individual that is baptized in water by a male soul will be baptized by the Holy Spirit if that person teaching them is a Christian and if he produces the Christian doctrine. And there are no different Christians. There's only one type of Christian. And therefore, your Savior added to the Lord's church, which he has only one. And therefore, if you live a faithful Christian life, Revelation 2.10, the Lord will save you when that day comes Amen. to bring home his flowers from his garden and not the devil's weed infested <laughs> garden. Amen. So therefore, we leave the faithful saints of God with Romans 16 and 16. The churches of Christ salute you.